So hello and you're very welcome to episode two of Ireland Away From Home with myself, Jamie Moore. Thanks very much for joining me. Last week we were in America, so this week we're a little bit closer to home and we're going off to England to chat to three Irish players playing in the Championship, League One and League Two. Daryl Lennon is an Irish senior international and he's playing for Blackburn Rovers in the Championship. Zach Elbazetti, of course, has been one of the stars of Stephen Kenny's Irish 21s for the last little while. He's playing for Lincoln City in League One. And Pierre Sweeney, another former Irish 21s player as well in League Two at Exeter City. Lads, good morning. How are you? Hello. Yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, yeah good, we're, thanks. We're good, thanks. Uh, apart from the lack of haircuts, Pierce, you're definitely the worst. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been blessed with good hair anyway, Jay, so I might as well just grow it out and see what happens. Better than Jamie's though, then. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think mine's actually all right today, but yeah, no, uh, the, the positive in, comments to start. Oh, you're all right. Uh, Zach's the only one with a good beard among us. So, Zach, hello, how are you? Yeah, it's growing all right, isn't it? <laughs> Lads, before we talk about the football, Leno, I'll start with you. Where are okay. you in the world and how's lockdown where you are? Yeah, just over in Manchester. Um, it hasn't been too bad. Um, we've been given like training programs to kind of keep on top of, which has been good, kind of past the days by. And the weather's been a blessing as well. That's kind of helped loads. If it was kind of lashing rain every day, it'd be, it'd be much harder. But since the sun's been out, it's been a uh, good to get out, like walk to the dog and stuff. So hasn't been too bad. And also some yoga with the dog, as Pierce was slagging you just before we started. Yeah, some yoga with the dog. She likes to join in. A bit of stretching in the morning, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind a bit of stretching. I need a miss stiff. Zach, where are you and how's lockdown there? Yeah, I'm, uh, I actually came home for a little bit. Um, obviously, I'm. I'm living on my own in Lincoln, so there was no point staying there on my own because I would have been going a bit crazy. Um, so when when the government changed the guidelines again, I decided to come home for a bit until uh, until we're back or until we know if the season's going ahead or not. Um, yeah, so I'm just with some family and then just training as well. We got uh, we got sent some stuff, some programs and that, so just just keep them taking over. Mr. Sweeney, yeah, I'm in. Um the beautiful Exeter. Um, for anyone who doesn't know where Exeter is, it's probably about six hours away from Manchester and about seven hours away from Lincoln down south. Um, pretty much I'm a bit different. Um, I'm I'm staying in Exeter. Um, my girlfriend's pregnant at the minute, so I, I couldn't really swan off back to back to Ireland on my own or, or with her and and um, spend lockdown there. So um, yeah, the two of us are just in, in lockdown together and. Um, just yeah, like Dara said, the weather's been the weather's been a massive plus. We can go out and sit in the garden and go out for a dog walk and stuff. So um, it's it's as best as it can be in a in a in a, in a weird way. So yeah, it's, it's been it's been okay with a bit bit of company. And away from doing your stuff, lads, in terms of like your zooms and your runs and stuff, <coughs> what have you been doing like to keep sane? And you mentioned like the dogs. I know. Dara, your missus expect a baby as well, so you're both quite yeah. busy in that sense, and probably a bit of Netflix and whatever else you're up to. Yeah, we've there's an awful lot of things to sort out with the baby, um, so that's been keeping us busy, and that's kind of looked to the positive. Like if we were training and playing, probably wouldn't have the time to get all this stuff sorted out. So at least now we have a bit of time. We've sorted most bits out, um, and we're both looking forward to it. She's due in the middle of June, so uh, yeah, we both can't wait for it. God love her. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, for you, is it nice being back at home with your family? And, and as you said, you know, being at home in Lincoln in, a, in a, an apartment on your own, I'm sure it wouldn't have been nice for six or eight weeks. Yeah, definitely. You know, enjoying my mum's home cooking. And then uh, my brother lives in Barcelona, but he got home as well. So the lockdown has been good. Uh, we got one of them tech ball tables as well. So there's been a good bit of, bit of competition going on in the house. So yeah, it's been all right. Uh, would you believe I was looking on Instagram at those tech ball tables? I saw a video, I think uh, David Beckham put up playing in his back garden. Are they yeah. decent fun, yeah? Yeah, they're good. They're worth it. Um, I think they're having a sale as well online at the moment. So I think if you have if you have a decent partner to play with, then it's, it's worth a buy. Well, get as... Pierce on them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamie, Jamie Parners is 10-year-old little cousin. Oh. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, I, I, I'm able and to be here, so... <laughs> lads i was just having a look at the the three league tables of the three clubs that you're involved with um and again even this morning on sky sports there's debates about what leagues are going to finish and what's going to happen if they do or if they don't and leno in your case with blackburn not too far off the playoffs in the championship having you know one league one and and you know 
got up and had a you know a chance to get into the playoff for the championship. Pierce, for you guys, you're I think fourth in the league, just a point off third, which is automatic promotion, and a couple of points off the top um, with a few games left. And, and Zach, for Lincoln, you're kind of mid table, and you know I don't think you can either get relegated or get promoted. Mm. So for you guys, it's probably not as important. But for the other two lads, what's your understanding and what's your thoughts on on what might happen? And would you both be happy? to go back to play football soon, given that your partners are both expecting babies soon and there's lots of stuff going on at home? Go on, um, I, I think it's a tough, it's a tough, a tough, tough question to answer because, like you said, there's, everybody's in, in a different situation. There's, there's a lot of people who have two or three kids or their partners expecting. Um, so for, for, for us to answer that... Um, to go back and play football with, with a slight a slight chance of catching coronavirus and, and being really ill and who knows what could happen is isn't what everybody wants to do. Um but then again everybody wants to get promoted and everybody wants to play in playoff finals and and everybody wants to, to celebrate. But on the other hand, if 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 the EFL or whoever decides to just promote uh, teams with ten games to go, I think if you're a fourth like us, you're, it's gonna be you're gonna be very upset, and it's gonna be a massive kick in the teeth because, like we all know, you can you can go six seven games unbeaten and jump four or five places. So, um, listen, not everybody's gonna be happy with what's decided. Um, there's people gonna be disappointed, and there's people gonna be happy. So, it's for me, I think. It should just be scrapped um, and start start fresh in August or September or whenever, whenever the government thinks it's the safest to do so. Um, but yeah, I think just to 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 be rewarded with nine or ten games left, that's thirty points to play for. That's an awful lot of football to be played, and to be rewarded with promotion or, or, or to be given relegation is a bit harsh, in my opinion. What's the story yeah. in Blackburn, Darren? I have, I have a similar opinion to Pierce um, in terms of like the dangers of people going back training. Um, kids like with this with this disease, everyone's dying. It's not just people who are over a certain age. Um, it kind of gets everyone. So I, I I personally like the season to be finished because it'd be so it'd be hard for teams like the likes of Exeter who are just off or let's say Leeds and West Brom and the championship, um, and then there's teams fighting relegation. I'd like the, te- the season to be finished, but it has to be safe to do. Um, whether the time is two weeks down the line or two months down the line, we just have to wait and see. Um, but it is, it's a tricky situation that nobody's going to be, kind of, not everyone's going to be happy with what decision comes out uh, comes about. Uh, but we just have to wait and see over the next couple of weeks what happens. And Zach, has there been much talk in, in Lincoln as well, even though the season in terms of the points on the board won't probably matter too much unless you win all nine or ten games, you're not going to make the playoffs and the same thing unless a team at the bottom has an unbelievable run, mm. you're not going to finish in the relegation places. So what's the talk there? Yeah, we've been having Skype calls every every couple of weeks and um, you know, there's obviously there's a lot of speculation going around at the moment that the leagues are going to be cancelled, but when they speak to us, they say they don't want to deal in speculation, they're just dealing with the facts, so Literally all day, tell us is all day now, and they've said at the moment we're we're due to go back, obviously. Um, but but it's looking like obviously the season's going to be cancelled, and you know for us this season I only joined in January, but it was about just consolidating our position in League One. Uh, and then next season looking to to hopefully go for promotion, but obviously you never you don't know what's going to happen now. Um, and I think it's important that. Everyone's just staying healthy because you know everyone wants a game of football, but we can't do it unless there's there's stuff in place to make sure that everyone can be 100% healthy. Because obviously with me, it's 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 all right because I'm going to be going back to an apartment on my own and I'm not going to be contaminating anything. But with the lads when they have babies on the way, you know you need to make sure everyone's 100% safe. Yeah, and of course, all of these conversations are being had with with health in mind, and I'm sure that the football won't go back on, unless you know. The, pe- the powers to be and the players feel that it's safe to do so. For you, Dara, what would need to be said to you as a championship player to go back to train and to eventually go back to play matches if that does happen in the next little while, if the season isn't cancelled and they do decide to finish it? I think probably the number one thing is everyone to be tested. Um, whether that happens or not, you don't know. Um, 
because if everyone gets tested and nobody has it, like then fair enough, like you can kind of go back. But the problem is when lads go back home to their families, they might be coming in contact with other people. So they might play one get one week and be okay, but the following week they might not be okay. And that's that's a difficulty about this particular disease that like people with no symptoms whatsoever might have the disease and pass it on to another person who might show all the symptoms. So unless like the government have some sort of plan with the Premier League and the EFL to like everything to be made safe and everyone to get tested on a regular basis, that's probably the only way that lads, especially in my situation, like a baby on the way, I don't want any kind of my wife being contaminated with coronavirus just before she's about to give birth. Um, you'd want to make sure that each and every week that we're all looked after. But at the end of the day, like there's people in the NHS who are dealing with this on a daily basis and they're more important than the footballers and the sports people throughout this, throughout the world at this particular moment in time. So they need to be looked after first and then we can have this conversation further down the line about us. Yeah. And I've enjoyed watching Sky Sports News lads over the last few weeks and on different programmes, they've had different managers and players and, you know, even chairmen from League One and League Two clubs talking about what might happen in those leagues and, and the money that would take to have everybody tested at Premier League level and even Championship level, would that be affordable to League One and League Two clubs? Would it be paid for by the FA? Would it be paid for by the government? So, like, for Zach and Pierce, the realities of all of the players that you're going to be playing against and with being tested and stuff is, is probably quite unlikely, is it? Oh, yeah, I'd say so because... Um... That's what I mean. Who's going to be paying for for weekly tests? I've seen something that costs like nearly 40, 50 grand a week or something like that. And to put that on top of wages for for us, we're in a we're in a decent position because we've we've sold uh, four, five or six players for for near enough a million or over f- for the last five or six years. So we're in a decent position. But um, to 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 put like another 50, 45, 50 grand bill for testing a week on a, on a League Two or a, or a newly promoted League One club is a lot, and it's especially it, when there's no crowds as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So yeah. There's, no, there's no income for the club, and to put another fifty grand on top of their outgoings is, is a bit steep. Like so, uh, it has to be like Dara said. It has to be. It has to be a hundred percent safe, and there has to be a plan put in place, whether the FA or or they pay for it or they help uh, League Two, League One clubs out with the financial uh, testing. So. Who knows? Who knows what's going to come out? Yeah, and you know, hopefully everybody can, can stay safe and get back playing at some stage. That's the idea of, of this podcast each week is to speak to different football people in, in different countries and find out about their life. And I started last week's one with the three lads in America. I just asked each of them just to talk for a minute or two about their, their own football career and, and, you know, from where they started to where they are now. So, Dara, if we start with you and assume people watching and listening don't know too much about you, how have you ended up being a Blackburn Rovers player for, I think, the last nine years? Yeah, it's um, so started off as a four year old um, when I first kind of played. I was playing under sevens as a four year old and uh, I played under seven for like four years. And then I left uh, Dunboyne, my local team, at under 10 to went to the Great Belvo, uh, as people would say. Um, and then I came in contact with Pierce, I think, well, under 12s. Under 12s, yeah. Under 12s was, yeah. So, um, we had a good couple of years at Delver there. I think we won two All Irelands. Yeah. Don't know if we win the league. Last, I think you won the, think last, you won the league yeah. under 16 in your last season, yeah. yeah. Last season we won the league. So I'd be quite a successful team. We had like five lads who went over to England um, in total. And then I moved over to Blackburn and I was under 17. Uh, I was at I was 17. Um, I had a quite a difficult start. I was out for virtually the first two years with a double stress fracture on my back. Um, but to be fair, the manager at the time, Gary Bowyer, he kind of looked after me. He said, "Here, like you show potential. Um, you worked hard in your injury and stuff, so we'll give you another year." Um, I done well when I had my, I got that year extension, and I got another year put on that. Um, I went to Burton on loan for about three months. Uh, done well there, and then I signed a new long term deal with Blackburn, um, and I eventually broke into the Blackburn team under Paul. La- well, with Gary Bowyer. I played three games at the end of the season. And then Paul Lambert gave me a bit my big chance to play like 20-odd games under him. And then uh, Owen Coyle came in. Uh, we didn't have the great year, obviously, getting relegated from the championship. Uh, it was a learning curve for us because you're kind of making your debut and doing well to start with so many positive things. But football, is, it can be rootless at times, which that, was, that year was and getting relegated. But to be fair, we kind of bounced back. 
we kind of got promoted in our first year in League One. Um, and then ever since, I've been kind of playing regularly basis for the time being. Zach, for you? Uh, yeah, started um, started at Shells. My brother used to play there. Hello? Yeah, we're here, Darry. Yeah, we're, we're here. We, we, we heard all of that. Can you hear us? Hey there. Yeah, we're here. Can you hear us? We're all good. Yeah, he's kind of broke up there. The two lads went off my picture. Okay, the joys of doing Skype from home, but we're all good. I can see you all and hear you all. So, Dara, if you can see us, we'll, we'll rock on. Okay, one sec. No uh, problem. Cheap boy from Manchester. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> I'm not paying the bills. <laughs> yeah. Would you believe I've done about ten of these with different people, League of Ireland ones, and we've been to like speaking to people in Cambodia, America, Australia, and in general the Skypes have been fine, and yet we're going to Manchester and Darren's one of the big glitchy. You need to spe- you need to go on to Richard Branson and the Virgin Media. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Um, to be fair, and then uh, so where was I? So yeah, I've been kind of playing for, um, kind of playing ever since. Dara, you yeah, finished your know. answer. We finished your answer. <laughs> we were on to Zach, and you're just rambling on still. <laughs> See, you just went. I thought you were like, you just put me off. <laughs> no, we haven't put you off yet. We're only 15 minutes in. Dara, you finished telling us sure. your initial career story. Can we move on to the other lads, or do you right, want to keep going? Just a bit of dodgy Wi-Fi here, lads. So uh, nah, let's oh, Zach speak. I spoke enough. <laughs> oh, well, Zach, go, Zach, go ahead, sir. Right, so uh, my brother used to play for Shells, and I was always going down to, to play with him. So I started there, um, and I always sort of played a year up because I was just that eager to play. Uh, and then at about 11, I wanted to just play with my mates and that, so I decided to go back to my local club at River Valley. Um, played for two or three years there just to enjoy my football and that, and then... It was like a, a big thing where the, the managers fell out, so the, the team sort of fell apart. Um, and then I went to Malahide, and that's that's all where I started getting noticed. Um, started playing like my best football. Went to the Candy Cup, had a good had a good Candy Cup. Went to the Mill Cup, that sort of thing. Went on trials, and then uh, decided to sign for West Brom. Uh, I think it was three years at West Brom, and then got released and went to Inverness, and then. That didn't start off the best. I got a, a six-month injury and then couldn't get in the team after that. Left with a year on my contract and came back home uh, to Waterford just to just to start enjoying my football again. And in fairness, that was that's probably been the best year of my career so far. You know, getting in the Ireland 21s team as well. I wouldn't have got in that if if I hadn't been there. And you know, Alan Reynolds helped me start enjoying my football again, which is. The first time I spoke to him, that's what he said he'd do for me. Um, and he was true to his word. And you know, that was the most enjoyable year of my career and had a good season. And now Lincoln came in for me uh, and then just signed for Lincoln in January. And obviously, season's first season's been cut short. I was there for about three months and then the season's been stopped. So for you, Pierce, unlike the other two lads, after your schoolboy career, you had a few games at senior level in the League of Ireland before you moved to... Reading it initially? Yeah, um, like Leno, um, I local side in, in Bray, Ardmore Rovers. I um, I started, I only, I only started playing football because my best mate um, brought me down at eight, eight years of age. I just wanted to play in the same team as him. Um, so I went for Ardmore for, for under eights till under twelves. Um, Obviously, if you're decent in, in Bray or the surrounding areas, um, the the likely the likely club to come looking for you is Saints uh, is Joey's. Um, so they came in for me. It didn't really didn't really want to go there. Um, and luckily enough, our Belvo manager, well, the Belvedere manager at the time, was from Bray, Simon Kelly. So he he he. I, I went off and signed signed for Belvedere. Um, Spent five, four, or five, five years there with um with Belvedere. Like Dara said, we had a really strong team. Um, there was five, five or six internationals. Five of us went away to England, and and we we had a successful time at, at Belvedere. And I had opportunities to go um to go away to England. There was um funny enough West Brom. I could have went to West Brom, but um I was I was I was thinking strongly of going um and. I had a meeting with Jimmy Jackson and John Moore um, 
I remember um, in the Clontarf changing rooms in, in the new Astro Turf, and I said, listen, I, I, I'm going to take that contract. And and they, they advised me not to, and I went home. I was fuming, and, and, and luckily enough to this day, I, I didn't sign because God knows where I'd be. So, yeah, um, left Belvedere. Um, at that time, they just started bringing in under-19. I think it was the first year it happened. Um, so signed for Bray Wanders, um, was there for about 18 months, um, broke into the first team when I was 17, played 15 games and and luckily enough um, a couple of clubs came in for me and, and I chose Reading, um, signed a three year deal at Reading um, and then in my last year um, I never broke into the first team. Never went on loan, was never allowed to go on loan for for some strange reason. But um, yeah, my last year I got a, a nasty ankle injury in January. Um, I was out for just over three and a half months, um, and I was let go that summer. Um, didn't didn't have many options, um, to be honest with you. And the day I was leaving, uh, Brian McDermott was the manager at that time, and I was quite close to him because he had signed me um, in 2012 previously, so he was back at the club again. Um, I went, he went into his office just to say like thanks and and goodbye or whatever, and it was close to tears, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and he he phoned up a couple of people. He actually r- rang. He was about to ring Gary Johnson. He was at Cheltenham at the time. And um, I said, listen, I've heard that Exeter City have been looking for me and and I've had a couple of the lads on to me because I knew a few of the lads. And and he rang the manager and I went down, I went down on a two-month trial, but it wasn't really a trial. I think they wanted to sign me anyway. So it's been two months there and I've been, I've been here for four years. Very nice. Yeah, that's an interesting story. And, you know, the... The chance of, of walking into Brian McDermott's office and having that conversation and stuff at the end of the time there that, that thankfully led to something else for you. Lads, there'll be lots of young people watching this who are young footballers either in this country or, or maybe in, in other countries too. How would you describe life on and off the pitch as a professional footballer in England? Any of you can go first. Um, I think it's it's not cracked up to what like people see from the outside. It's um, you have to live a very like different life from your mates at home definitely like your mates to be let's say out on a Friday Saturday night whereas you have to be in like looking after yourself um, in my opinion I think rest is just as important as playing if the rest right because especially in like the likes of Championship League 1, League 2 you have you could play what 46 you play 46 games a season which is it takes its toll on your body so you have to kind of look at yourself give yourself the best opportunity to do well Um but yeah, I think for young lads who are looking to come away, just to be like very disciplined, motivated, um, and just do the best you can, and most importantly, probably enjoy it as well. Um, we get to do the best thing. Like as a young lad, you'll always dream of doing playing football for a living, and uh, it's great life to live um, and enjoy. Zach, for you, you've you've been you know in the UK as a kid. You've played in Scotland when you were a little bit older, and you've only been back there now for a couple of months. How would you describe? Your life as a as a pro in League One. Yes, yeah, so far it's been good. The the club's been good and that, but as as Daryl was saying, I think you just for a young player, it's all about enjoyment until until it comes to that point where where you're gonna be moving away or you're gonna be going to a League of Ireland club. But yeah, you, you always have to enjoy your football. That's when you that's when you're playing your best for me. Like and any time of of not being enjoying, it's when when I go off form or that. Um, and then the other thing is you have to be dedicated. I think, um, as as Dar was saying, you know, when you're younger, there's nights your mates are going out, but you have a game the next day, so you have to say, oh, I can't do it. So it's just about dedication and and having that single mindedness that you want to be become a footballer. Pierce, um, yeah, um, I think listen, there's there's three of us here who who've we all have. We've all had different different journeys to to where we are at the minute. Um, so there's a lot of ups, there's a lot of downs. We've all been injured. We've all uh, been on trials, and and Dara's never been released, I suppose. But me, me and Jack have, have left clubs, and we've gone on to different clubs. Um, so it's if I was if I, if I was looking back now at myself as as a 17 year old, and I was talking to if I or if I was talking to young lads going to England. 
if you're given an opportunity, just give it a hundred percent. Um, because if if I'm comparing or I'm looking at me and Leno, um, Dara Dara probably was more more committed and more professional than I was uh, when we first went over. Um, and and it, it's shown how he's doing now and how he coped with his injury. Um, but for me, like I, I I wouldn't say I regret how I was before, but I could have I could have been better. I could have looked after myself a bit better. I could have been could have trained a bit harder. I could have done a lot more extras and stuff like that. But um, if I was if I was talking to a young lad now, I'd say if you if you're given a, a good opportunity at a good club or or you want to be a professional. Give it your all because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to be a professional footballer, and if you're successful, it can sort you. It can sort you out for life. So, just give it your all and and, and put a hundred percent into it. I'm interested as well to hear about some of the sacrifices that you've all had to make, and you know, a couple of you spoke there about nights out with your friends, and you know, the stories of missing funerals and missing communions and confirmations, and even some weddings and different things and of course you're all living away from your families I know you have partners and something with you but in terms of parents and brothers and sisters and all that how have you all been able to deal with all that and those type of challenges that you face given that you are working in in a different country to where you kind of live for a lot of your life um it is hard like obviously being away from your family on a daily basis and like you said you miss the likes of family gatherings like weddings and birthdays or whatever but at the end of the day like if you really want to do it you kind of make those sacrifices um mm. and that's the thing like if if you're not kind of willing to make that sacrifice i don't think you're, you should be in you should be playing football because football i don't know how many kids around the world play and so many kids will sacrifice so much so it's probably the, it's the most competitive sport in the in the world to make it so like what pierce and the uh like what pierce said you have to be willing to make such a sacrifice to do well and to make a good living from it definitely and for you, Pierce and Zach, I'm sure it's similar as well. Pierce, you've been there quite a long time. I know Zach's been home in a couple of intervals. So for you, Pierce, as well, having been there through Reading and, and through Exeter as well, it's probably eight or nine years now that you haven't lived in Ireland. How have you found all of that and the challenge that presents? Um, it's it's the first first year was was um was interestingly tough. Um. Listen, I, I just it was out of the blue. I I, I left. Um, I hadn't got a clue about it. And next minute, you know, I was on, I was on a plane uh, to have a look at a couple of clubs with me ma. And um, so, yeah, it's it, it, the first first eight months to a year was really tough. I was a little bit homesick, and I was in digs, and I didn't know. I was just like, what is this? Like, me my head a bit melted here. Um, but. I've been here. This is well. This is my eighth year here, and I haven't been home in about six months. So, it's. I think the longer you're over here, the, the easier it gets. I think after about a year, uh, two or two or three years, it was, it was second nature for me to be to be missing things and and to be away from family. So, listen, it it is tough. Um, my mum was fifty last week, and if. If, it, if there was no lockdown, I probably, I, I might have been at home. I, I wasn't guaranteed to get home for that. So it, you, do, you do miss out on things and it does hurt you and you, you are a little bit jealous of your mates um, getting together and, and celebrating. But at the end of the day, it, it is only a party. It is only a birthday. It is only a 21st. It is only a 30th or something. It is only a wedding. So if if you if you're not 100 percent committed to football and you want to be out with your mates all the time, then like Dara said, you probably shouldn't be in football. But um, yeah, first year it was tough, but um, I have my girlfriend now and and the baby on the way, so um, it's pretty much like home now. To be honest with you, Zach, the fact that you've been away a few times and home a few times as well has that made being away more difficult the fact that you have had the chances to be at home or you know because you've been there kind of for shorter stints has that made it a little bit easier uh not really like when when obviously when i made, when i first moved over to west brom i was only 16 and it was it's the first few days i had you know my mom and dad dropped me at the eggs and then i remember the first day i was just sat at the eggs thinking like what what do i do now um but once you once you get playing football that's your mind's your mind's off it um yeah so for me it's it's not being that tough obviously i miss home but 
we have that that in my head that I want to want to be the best footballer I can be, and you know, at the moment you have to you have to be playing in in England to 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 play at the highest level. So for me, it's just as I said, having that that single mindedness and having that drive that I want to I want to be the best I can be, and 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 as the lad said, making them sacrifices to be the best that I can be, and. Um, but yeah, obviously there's there is tough days. Um, but yeah, it's just having that that goal in mind and having that that clear picture of of what the end goal is. Yeah, I think Pierce spoke well there about England being home now, given that you've kind of been there for so long. But if we talk about home in the context of Ireland as well, lads, what do you miss? And apart from the obvious things like family, and I'm looking forward to hearing Pierce's answer here because I think I know what he's going to say. But uh, what do you miss most about Ireland, Pierce? You can start. Um. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being brutally honest with you, um, obviously the the most obvious obvious answer would be your mum, your dad, your your whatever. But um, I miss um a good point of Guinness. I miss. Yes, I knew you'd <laughs> say that for your first time. <laughs> I miss um whenever whenever I used to go out. Whenever I was home, obviously you'd go out on a night out and on a Sunday morning, me me ma used to make um. A bit of breakfast, and she'd always make me a bit of white pudding on toast. That's <laughs> that's probably one of it up there with I miss white pudding. Um, yeah, there's no white pudding over here. No, there's not. There's <laughs> pudding over here. Um, but yeah, I think I miss like um the the Irish hu- humor as well. It's a bit a little bit different over here. Um, I think if you swear at somebody, it's it's an insult over here. But if you swear, <laughs> if you swear at somebody, if you swear at somebody back home, you're complimenting them. So, um. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say point again is white pudding and, and the good Irish Irish crack. Lads, either of you just want to jump in? Yeah, so just yeah, you miss your family. Um, like you see, like you see, you see people doing things at the weekend that oh, you'd love to be there, but you're kind of just sat in a house, kind of watching whatever Netflix or a movie or something. So like, all just the simple things and just being in the company of your family. Uh, as as well as what Pierce said, like the Irish crack is just different. And people have a different sense of humor at home that, like, like not many. Yeah, those those are the little things that you do miss. Zach, yeah, for me it's just obviously the home cooking. Um, my mom and dad are both good cooks, and then my mom's a good baker, so I miss that sort of stuff. And and then yeah, just Irish people are different to English people. Um, they have a different different sense of humor and different banter, and I think they're just a little bit a little bit more friendly at times um, so yeah you miss you miss the Irish people if we can focus that a little bit on, on each of you and then I'll start with you as someone who's oh, yeah. I'm very interested in your um, when you got your injury you made a decision to do your leave insert from England and you had left after transition year I think um, and fifth again year. it's fifth year okay fifth year yeah, fifth so year, like yeah. education is something that you know i speak about on my radio shows and podcasts and stuff to sports people quite a lot even lads who are you know earning a good living from playing, from playing football some of them are still doing an online degree or something else as well when you were kind of 17 what prompted you to make sure you got that leave and cert done um so after fourth year i'd um i contract offers with derby and middlesbrough uh, and I turned them down. I said, no, I'm going to focus. I'm going to do my fifth year anyway. So this time next summer, at least I can potentially, I can still continue on to do my leaving cert. Um, and that's what I did. Got through fifth year and had con- a couple of contract offers and Blackburn were the team that are most interested. So I said to him, I was like, okay, we'll sign, but I have to do my final year of my leaving cert. Uh, and they said, okay. And then to be fair to them, they were brilliant. They provided like private tutors. I had to like they gave me extra flights on my contract. I'd be home once a month to kind of catch up on all the stuff that I missed throughout that month. So they gave me a platform to kind of do as well as I could do um, from living away from home. And looking back, I think it's probably the best thing to do because so many lads that go over they don't not have, don't have an education or nothing, and then. There's only like 1% of players who go over actually do make a living from the game. So it's when you look back, it's like it's the best one, of the best things, if not the best thing I've done. Um, and it's given me something else. Like I'm at the moment, I'm kind of, I'm into my second year doing a sports science degree. And if I didn't have my qualifications to leave them, sort of, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So you have to kind of look beyond football because football is only a short living when 
when you look at the lads finishing that's between 30 and 38 let's say um so i'll give you something to focus on after football which is which i'm kind of happy about and is it nice as well to like be a footballer and a footballer hopefully for the next eight years but still have something else and you're doing the sports science degree now like so it's nice to come home from training and have something else to focus your brain on yeah exactly because it can like football can consume you so much like and the more you think about it, the nearly worse it'll be. So I think it is good to have some like a different interest. Like you see an awful lot of lads playing like other sports like golf or tennis or whatever it is. Um, I think it's very good for your mental health more than anything else to have something else to focus on. Um, and that's that's one of the reasons why I said I'm going to do like a bit of sports science degree and have something after football, but at the same time give myself something else to focus on while I am playing. And as well. In your early career, I can't remember when you came on there. You came on to my radio show years ago. You were about to play an FA Cup yeah. game against United, your boyhood, yeah. lovely club United, who I hate. And uh, <laughs> you, you, were, you, were, you were playing centre back against Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Um, yeah. Apart from like you, you can talk about him too, and you know across your career, international wise, well, your couple of caps. What type of really good players have you played against? Um, I, I did an interview not so long ago actually, and someone asked me if we're Blackburn actually on Twitter, I think. Someone asked me who was the hardest player you played against. And obviously you have the likes of like you play play against Abraham Fitch and stuff, but actually within the game, Timu Pukki was by a mile the best player I've marked and played against. Uh, just the movement and stuff, and you could see like he went to the Premier League, like obviously Norwich got promoted, went to the Premier League and tore it up for the first couple of months. Uh, but yeah, when I look back, he was on that given day, he was the best player I've, I've played against. I should have asked you for a tip for me fantasy football at the start of the year, so I could have had him in. <laughs> I didn't even have him in. So. <laughs> <laughs> and like you've moved as well, Dara, from you know when you were on loan at Burton, were they league? What league were they? Were they, were they league two? League, league two, yeah. I went, so I signed for Burton in November, I think, and I went back. I got called back um, in March. And Burton got promoted that year from League Two to League One. Um, and at the end of that season, that's when I made a Blackburn debut. Uh, I played those last three. I think I made the debut against Millwall at home, and I played three games at Blackburn. Um, but yeah, that was like a learning curve. Like Pierce had that experience before he made over playing men's football, and that's probably one thing I wish I kind of had growing up. Don't get me wrong, like love me days at Belvedere and stuff, but the setup now was much better than what we had at growing up because it gives you like a pathway of like whatever 17s, 19s into men's football, um, which we didn't have at that stage. We just went from straight from school boys training like twice, three times a week to going full time, which is very hard for a, an Irish lad to kind of adapt to it. But now it's it's an awful lot more professional at home. And is there much of a, a difference in the standard, Dara, from maybe your, your League Two days through winning League One with Blackburn and now competing to try and get in the playoffs in the championship? in terms of like the, the type of teams you're playing against and, and the actual standard of the football matches? Yeah, it is hard. But the best thing about playing in League Two when I was I was at Burton, like it's, it's men's football and like lads are playing like they have to play for to win because they have to pay their mortgages and stuff. Whereas if you play like reserve football, no offence, but it's it's not great. And most lads will say like it's just, it's like you're playing a friendly match most of the weeks. There's not many, not many people at the games and... Um, Whereas you go to like a league league two game when I was at Burton, like fans are there, like booing you. It's proper men's football, which it helped develop me into the player I am today. Like cage for me. Honestly, it's mental. Few go boo, on. Uh, few boos just, there. Just like just touching on what Dara said, like in like league two or or, or league one or whatever, like. It is true. Like people are, people are, players are scrapping them. Players are fighting to to win because they have, we all have, obviously we all have win bonuses and we all have promotion bonuses and and they want to they want to earn money. So like some of the things that I've come across over the last couple of years, like you you'd never believe, like from fa- opposition fans to opposition players, is you just wouldn't see it like in the Premier League or even in the Champ. Like it's just it's just a bit it's just a bit weird. Like. It's weird. <laughs> like, like ripping, like uh, ripping me nipples off and like pinching. <laughs> and, like, what are you doing? Like I'm just trying to. Uh, tr- there's a corner coming in. And there's a fella like just grabbing me arse and all. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so weird. Like. 
Yeah, you just try to get into your head. Just yeah, that's what I mean. Head. That's all. That's all, Liz. Well, I think I. I, I I think Leno is one of those people, though. I think you would be doing that to Pierce in the box. Oh, no. Leno, Leno's a bit different. He'd bite your nose off. <laughs> <laughs> he would. He's an animal. An <laughs> <elbow into> <laughs> and, and, like, go good, on. Like, no, nah, it is. Like, it's good. Like, see, when you play against these teams, like, it helps you so much. Because at the start, you don't, you're not used to it. And you're like, what the hell's going on here? But, like, after, like, five or six games, just get used to it. And then you probably end up doing the same thing. Because, you know, like, it disrupts you, kind of puts you off your game so you're like right I'll do that to my opponent or whoever, whoever you're playing against yeah I'll ask Zach in a minute at the other end as an attacker that's being absolutely nailed by you big centre backs <laughs> but <laughs> Kill me heads. Uh, yeah <laughs> like for you guys at the other end and you're trying to you know maybe Pierce in a league 2 game a big league 2 game and you're against a winger or you're against a striker and you know you are and you spoke about what happened to you as, as a defender like it's probably you know do anything to win on the pitch of course, yeah. Listen, um, we've came up against um, like lads that have been on loan from like Spurs or or prem, Premier League clubs and, and decent standard champ clubs, and and they've been highly rated and stuff. And like the, it is, it is a wake up call sometimes play, playing league, league two for for lads that are like sugar coated at, at different clubs. And and for me coming up against like players like that, like you wanna you wanna like get in their head and you wanna like disrupt them and and to be brutally honest with you, you wanna hurt them sometimes like just to get the better of them. So um that's what I mean. It, it's 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 like you asked Dara a question there like is there a difference between like different standard between uh, champ and, and league two? I think I think that's the main thing because there's, there's there's a lot you get away with in league two than you wouldn't get away with in the championship because there's not there's not a lot of cameras around in, in league two <laughs> so you get away with. I think there's a couple of players that could have been given lifetime bans from what I've seen, but um, <laughs> yeah. including yourself, yeah. it, 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 including myself. Yeah, listen, I've. I haven't been there. I used to play Gaelic football, so I, and hurling, so I have a bit of aggression in me and a bit of nastiness in me. So I'm trying to get rid of that a little bit sometimes. But um, yeah, Zach, at the other end, how do you and how have you experienced that type of game? You know, you're an attacker that likes to dribble and run past people and do tricks and be expressive. Have you found, you know, the levels of I'm not going to say violence towards you, but just how how rough and tumble the league over there can be like? Yeah, obviously, I think the League of Ireland's a bit similar. Um, you know, going to places like Finn Harps, it's not, you know, where um, where the pitch doesn't suit you, and then they're they're very physical. So I think that sort of that got me ready for it. Um, but yeah, like the lad said, a lot more a lot more goals in, in League One and League Two. Um, the rest let the game go a bit more, but I don't really mind it. Um, because obviously I, was, I played Ga and that when I was growing up, so I'm used to that that sort of physicality. Um. And if someone is trying to smash you, it's, it's good because you know you've got in their head so that way. Um, so I, I enjoy it. And um, Zach, you're 22. I spoke there to Leno about education and we started talking about other stuff there. Did you do leave and cert? Have you done anything since you finished school in terms of education or do you have plans to do stuff? No. Uh, when, I was, when I was signing up for West Brom, we just finished fifth year and we agreed in, in my contract to finish my leave and cert when I went over. Um, but then... When I got over there, they were saying it was too hard to get to find tutors, and and that would be too much stress on me when I was away. Um, so I sort of let them let them talk me out of it. Which looking back on it, I should I should have should have put the foot down and, and insisted on it. Um, but now, uh, before before the the coronavirus started, I was looking at, at starting some courses. Um, I don't know if you know the Satanta College; they do a good a good strength and conditioning degree. Um, yeah, and I know a few. I know a few of the boys that, that do that, so I was looking into the on that. Um, so I think they enrolled in, in November again, so I'll look, I'll, I'll try to get into that because, as the lad said, I think it's important to have to have something to, to keep your mind going when you're not training and then something something there if if, if something happens. You know, football's, football's a physical game and it's, it only takes one, one tackle to, to end, end your career, really, so it's good to have that backup plan. You, Pierce, did you 
when you were with Bray, were you still in? You were still in school, I think. Did you did you get as far as leaving cert, or have you done anything education wise? I was in school, Jamie, but I never went. <laughs> <laughs> I never went to school. You can tell. You can tell he never oh, went. Yeah. I, I speak well. I speak well for a fellow with no education, don't I? <laughs> yeah, you come across all right. <laughs> um, now, um, I I got to a stage in school where. I was away so much with um, football and all different sports um, that like I was so far behind in school work and and I think most of the teachers and my principal just like accepted the fact that I I, I only ever wanted to be a footballer. Um, so when I left, when I was at Bray, I was just in school like in fifth year or whatever and I wasn't really paying attention um, in school, and and lucky enough, I I got a move away. But um, like like the boys said, like um, I, I have looking back now, I kind of regret not having any like leave insert or or any edu- proper education behind me. Um, I've thought about I've thought about stuff over the last um couple of months. Um, going back to to college or university and trying to get me maths and stuff. So. Um, I, I, I don't. I, to answer your question, no, I don't have any love insert, and I just about have enough brain cells to hold the conversation. Um, <laughs> that's all you need. That's, that's all I need. So um, <laughs> it, it is a thought. Um, I haven't really thought about coaching badges because everybody wants to be a coach, and there's thousands of coaches in England. So um, I think. I'll probably go to university or, or try to get me maths, um, maths and science or something like that, and and see where it takes me and see what see what pops up. Yeah, very well expressed, Zach. The question on uh, players you played against who've been really good across your international underage career with the twenty ones or the, the club stuff. Who comes to mind? Uh, played Jack Willis right at twenty threes game. He was good, and then when we went to the the seventy injured, I was I didn't even know he played, but the lick plays for Holland against us um, obviously he's had an unbelievable career then Donnarumma played for Italy in that same competition against us and then at 18 to play uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold and you know, he, he's having an unbelievable career so they'd be the ones that, that stand out so far Were you up against him on the wing like directly? Trent? Yeah he, he, actually, he actually played left back that day and I was playing right wing um, but to be honest if you if you said to me now, if you said to me then that he would have been doing what he's doing now, I wouldn't have believed you. He was a good player, obviously, but he wasn't, I wouldn't be thinking he's going to be the, the best the best right back in the world at the moment. But, you know, fair play to him. He's doing unbelievable at the moment. Best right back apart from Pierre Sweeney of Exeter City, of course. I'm just going to Pierce, who have you played against that's really good? Um, Obviously, we've We've played against um, some really good players um, at under twenty one level. I've played against Wilshire as well. I've played against um, a lot of good players at, at that level. Um, I want to I want to like go back to the League of Ireland. I've played against a lot of very very good players back then. We had a chat yesterday, Jamie, about um, when I was at League of Ireland. Like we played against like Mark Quigley at the Sligo team and Danny North and Gary Twig and and players like these, and they were. At the time when I played against them, they were really, really good. Um, but at Exeter, I've played against, I've been up against James McLean, um, been up against Solomon Rondon. They were, they were tough. James McLean was unbelievable against, like he's so quick, so strong. Um, yeah, and like there's a lot, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of decent players that that, that have come across. Um, the fella called Carlon, Carla Hearn Grant, he's at Huddersfield now. He yeah, is a good player. He is the quickest fella I have ever seen in my life. Um, we played against Trey. He was at Charlton. We played against him in the the Carabao Cup, it's called. And there was a couple of lads in our team that knew him. And, and they said he used to be like a sprinter. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and this was on a Tuesday night. And we played on Saturday. So you, you know what it's like when you're playing Saturday, Tuesday. And I was like, oh, here we go. I was, I was whacking in like uh, Red Bulls, like energy tablets. Oh. <laughs> and I still didn't get near the fella. So uh, no, no surprise that he, he got a decent move. So he was, he was him and James McLean. As far as I can remember, have been the toughest players I played in. Was that McLean game? That was an FA Cup game on TV, wasn't it? Um, I don't, I don't think it was on. I don't know. 
I think I watched it. I think you had a difficult first few minutes, did you? Oh, oh listen. I'm, it's difficult I'm, 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, old, I'm old and bold enough now to, to say that I was, for the first, I'd say, 50 minutes, I was, my eyes were starry, blurry, bloodshot. <laughs> I gave away a pen out the first 15 minutes against McLean and, oh, I was having a nightmare. And then it took about 60 minutes for me to even get near him, lightly. So, yeah, it was it was a tough day, as you can imagine. They were, they were in the prem at the time, so it was it was tough. He's the fittest man I've ever come across. Oh, he's well, a machine. He's a machine. He's all day. Like, he's just, the stats and everything he kind of produces each and every day in training is yeah. unbelievable. I've never seen anyone like him. And hearing from other people who've trained him, they just said he's... He's a joke. And he was selling. He was selling as well. He was he was t- chatting to me during the game and stuff, and we had a little bit of a giggle. So yeah, I think he was man. laughing at me because the, the way I was playing against him, like you know what I mean. But <laughs> <laughs> he was selling the fair, and he was he was unbelievable. Lads, we're coming to the end. Can I have you for ten more minutes? I'm just have two more yeah, questions. No, Is that all right? Yeah. Live all day, Jamie. Yeah. Stay in the all day. I'm enjoying this. Okay, we'll keep going. So is that you good for another few minutes? Yeah, yeah. that's grand. That's grand. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're laughing about kind of those games where you played where you played against really good players and Pierce let's start with you because you know you're able to take the piss out of yourself and have a laugh about McLean and stuff but on a serious note how do you and have you all dealt with the bad days a big defeat a big mistake a stupid red card an own goal you know something that has cost your team and the supporters are maybe having a go at you and you know deep down yourself that you've you've made a bad mistake how have you all been able to do well, with those Pierce to start with you that sounds like my career to be honest with <laughs> you I'm but, trying to be serious I'm, now. I'm being I'm being brutally honest with you. I have I've experienced every single one of them in in my career from under twelves till now. I've I've been sent off as you can as the two of you can remember, I got sent off in an all order final to make it three years in a row. For uh, kicking someone for kicking someone off the ball. Yeah, yeah for Bill. Oh, I remember it well. <laughs> and let, let me just say, Leno, you missed four sitter. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was going four goals you missed, on the Tuesday yeah, after. You missed, four, you missed four one-on-ones to win the all Ireland final three for a third year in a row. And then you blamed it on me. So, yeah, um, the, that's, the, that's the only time I've ever been sent off in my career, funnily enough. Um, bad days have played. Well, I've lost two playoff finals at Wembley. Um, they've been really tough. Um in front of 50, 60,000 people, they've been, they've been really tough. Um, I've, I've scored a couple of own goals, obviously. I've given away penalties. I've, I've got abused off fans and stuff. And to be honest with you, the only, the only way you can deal with it is, personally, is your home life. Um, if, 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 if you make a mistake and you, and you go back to a, like Zach and Lincoln, if he misses a sitter to cost him three points or something and he goes back to a, an empty flat on his own, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot, lot tougher than, mm. than me and Dara going back to a house to our girlfriends and babies and we, we can take our mind off it. So I think your environment plays a, a, a big part in how you deal with the disappointments and the failures of football and stuff. And, and if, like, after a playoff final, we lost for the second year in a row, all I wanted to do was was just sit, sit down in an empty room and just have a bottle of beer and just like forget about it and just like kind of think of what, what I could have done differently and stuff like that but then you can't really dwell on it too much because you've got to go again and you've got to go on holiday with your missus and your and your family and stuff and you got to be you got to be happy and you got to you got to forget about it come the, come the next preseason. So um, dealing with disappointments and failures, I think, is about what's around you and, and company and and your environment. Anyone else want to jump in there, Daryl? Zach? Yeah, go ahead, I think Zach. It's, I think it's important, obviously, having that good support network. Uh, for me, my family have been brilliant. You know, obviously, I live away from home at the moment, but they... I ring, I ring my family every night and after every game, and they know, they know. Like if you've if you've had a bad game, and for me, if I have a bad game, I don't really want to talk about it. So it's just taking my mind off and talking about other stuff. Um, because you know yourself, like that you've you've had that bad game or you've made a mistake, and dwelling on it's not really going to do anything. You know, you can go in, you go in every Monday and watch the game, so you don't want to be talking to your family about things you've done wrong on the pitch so for me and my family are just 
way to heal because I can talk to them about other stuff and um, take my mind off. Yeah, I think it's just about having that good good support network. Dara? Yeah, I think that's massive. Obviously, your support network's huge. The people you talk to, like, after a match. But I think it's important, like, whether you win or lose, is try to kind of keep a level head. Because if you kind of, like, throughout the season, like I said, you have 46 odd games. If you win, you're kind of ecstatic. And if you lose, you're down the dumps. Like, it's like a roller coaster for a season. Whereas if you kind of have more of a level head, like, you win a game, right, fair enough, go, move on to the next game. Or if you lose a game, right, fair enough, you, you move on to the next game. Um, I think I've, like, over the years, I've kind of learned that more because I used to always if you win a game you'd be a little bit more kind of static and then but like I said if you lose a game you're down the dumps um, and I think that's helped me kind of kind of improve my own game because um, if you play Saturday you might have a bit of a beast of a game you have to kind of put that away quick and kind of focus on your Tuesday game which is um, and that's that's like I said the championship is just relentless in that way um, it's better off to have a level head Lads, a quick fire round here to five questions, but one word answer is before we talk about Ireland to finish, right? Um, okay. The, the best best stadium you've ever played in and why? Does it have to be full? No. Um, well, for me, I, I, I played in an empty Emirates stadium. Um, obviously, that was unreal, but um, it's got to be Wembley. Um, 50- oh, wow. 56,000 <laughs> just took that one in <laughs> twice sorry <laughs> uh, Wembley two yeah. playoff finals yeah two losses is it, and is it as amazing as it yeah. looks on TV the stadium is the pitch wasn't as they say oh, the, it's like Wembley it's the pitch was not as I expected Dara uh the Aviva has to be make me debut. It was yes, most memorable game, the best game. And Graham Brooks and Graham Brooks t- uh, took your goal as well. <laughs> and I, I claimed the assist. I claimed the assist. I don't know how you didn't <laughs> slide tackle him. You should have slide tackled him. <laughs> I remember, I remember, I was working at that game, and I remember interviewing Leno and Berkey in the Nick zone afterwards, and I remember asking Dara what. What happened with the goal? And you were so gracious, but you, you, you he literally robbed your your Ireland debut goal from you. I don't mind. He's a striker. Like if I was a striker in that situation, I'm taking the goal off the centre half. Um, I was obviously just happy to just get on. That was that was a big thing for me just to make my debut, which is like proud. You mate, you should have got a better header on it. Well, you know what I mean. You should be burying that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a header. You kicked it, did you not? I think he kicked it as far you as you kicked I it. You didn't. Oh, head. You kicked man. it. Your foot, your head's your best foot. There's no way Chris, you, Chris, you need to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, what stadium for you? Uh, I might be Lincoln debut in the stadium of light. Um, oh, wow, yeah, nice. Yeah, that was a nice one. There was over 30,000 people, and it was just it was a good place to make, make me football league debut. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, watching Sunderland Till I Die and the new music coming out and stuff. Yeah, yeah it was unbelievable. You know, it's just. So it's a Premier League club, isn't it? Um, they have like this the stadium's just a joke, and they shouldn't really be in League One. Um, but that's the way it is at the moment. On the other side of things, lads, the worst stadium you've played in, and why? It could be to do with the dressing rooms or the pitch or Akron. Something else. Um, Akron okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's pretty bad. Oh, changing rooms are horrific. Uh, the stadiums, like the stands, are are tiny and. If you don't bring a decent away 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 fans, then there's only like a fifteen hundred people there, and the pitch is usually bog standard. So that's that's grim. Yeah. Lads, Finn Harps for me. Finn Harps. Okay, yeah. Finn Harps, Bally Buffet in the League of Ireland, terrible. Uh, we played them second last game of the season last year, and the pitch was just a disgrace. Yeah. And then they don't like it's just the, the change rooms are worse than Accrington. Like, it's just <laughs> terrible. Can't so, be worse than that, that's surely. Nah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I <laughs> have all the Ollie Horgan up there, fuck's sake. Uh, but uh, yeah. there's, the, there's the first curse 59 minutes in. Shut there we go. Me as well. Um, yeah, the lads for the for the other two that haven't played in Finn Harps and hopefully you'll never have to. Um, there's the change rooms are very small. There's probably what Zach like three or four showers in each one. But yeah. for the two teams, the referees and anybody else involved in the complex of the change rooms, there's two cubicle toilets. Oh my god! Yeah, it's disgraceful. 
So you could have six or seven fellas waiting to have a poo before the match, and they'd have to have a queue up uh, on the ref. <laughs> like, and there's to- the, 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 there might not be toilet rolls. Very bad. Lovely. <laughs> nice. Leno, what stadium is the worst for you? I'd say Accrington as well, but like in the championship, only recently enough, Brentford's not great. Uh, the dressing room in Brentford is terrible, and uh, don't get me wrong, they're a very good team. And if they get on top of you, like the atmosphere it can just it can take over. Um, like we were two 0 up, and that particular game was like Gale Force wins, and they meant they, it was two 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 finished. Um, like the pitch and I, think, huh? I watched that on the telly. Oh, I was like, you don't realise how bad it was. Like our keeper, who was a big kick, like he was kicking from in the inside his box to the other box in the first yeah. half, but he couldn't get past. Like he couldn't get into the D, uh, into the centre circle in the second half. So that was a difficult game. Um, but I think they're moving stadium actually next season yeah. into a better stadium. But, yeah, okay, have you worst. have you ever been starstruck by an opposition player? And if so, who was it? Maybe when you were younger or a bit older. Really? Like surely Leno, when you're playing against Latin Ibrahimovic, you're marking him. Yeah, you're like John, you know seeing that game, right? Because remember, at the same time, Pogba came on and Ibrahimovic came on at the same time, and you don't realise how big they are. But you're thinking, right, like I'm actually I'm what six foot one, and I'm looking. It's like I'm looking into the clouds, looking at these kids. <laughs> And I was just saying, wow, like, how the hell, if, like, if he, if a ball gets crossed into the box, how the hell are you going to stop him? Like, um, they're the probably only thing, like, just size alone, just saying, well, these boys are massive. Like, you don't realise, when you see it on TV, um, you don't realise how big they actually are in person. Lads, any, any starstruck people you've played against? Um, I wouldn't really say starstruck, but when we played the, we played the senior team before Teola, and that was a bit, first few minutes of that was a bit mad, you know, because, grow up watching them um, but I wouldn't really say starstruck yeah but that was that was a good experience but testing ourselves against them Pierce um, yeah I'm not sure if if I was like starstruck um, but like my first first year at Reading like um, I walked into the canteen and like the likes of Ian Hart was sat there like having a cup of tea and stuff and like and he was great with me there, but like just to even like have his phone number in my phone book and stuff for for a man who what what he's done in the game and and how good he was is it it was unbelievable. So um and he's probably one of the best players I've ever I've ever seen firsthand in training and stuff. So he was probably my first first time ever like being like Jesus, there's Ian Hart. Like mm, yeah, mm. um managers. Managers either that been that that have managed you guys or that you've played against. Like I remember Jose Mourinho one day walked in. I was doing a game. I think Man United played at Diviva or someone played at Diviva and he walked into the press conference. And I've been you know interview managers and stuff for a long time and whatever. And I looked just going, that's Mourinho. Like yeah. for you guys maybe in some yeah. of the big games and you look and the opposition manager walks past you in the tunnel or you see him on the sideline or something like that. Um, I'll tell you. I think I don't know if it's a known fact, but like see if Liverpool are playing against a team. Klopp watches your warm up, the opposition's warm up. Yeah. And we play we played Liverpool, I think it was two two years, two seasons ago in pre season game. And we we're looking and just turned around, there's Klopp just watching our warm up. <laughs> Whether just to kind of like frighten you or something weird. That was a bit like never seen that before and haven't seen it since. So in terms of that, like not not starstruck was like just weren't used to it. Yeah, he stands on the halfway line just inside his own half and literally, he's not even trying to hide it, like. Yeah, he just watches you. He doesn't care about his own team because he knows, like, how his team is going to perform and he just watches you, just try to intimidate you before the game starts. You can tell, you can tell you're a Liverpool fan, Jamie, by the way your voice <laughs> goes when you talk. <laughs> talk about Klopp, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's the best manager in the history of football. Oh, well, let's, not, let's not get started. Let's not get started. No. Right, Pierce. Who's your manager? Who's your Who's the manager that you played against that you looked around, looked over and went, "Wow." Well, I, I, I haven't really, to be honest with you, I haven't really, I haven't really played against any like top top clubs. Um, like the only the only like big managers that that I've come across has been like um Alan Pardew, um when he was at West Brom, um Ian Holloway, the manager at Grimsby. So he's he's a he's a bit of a name, isn't he? So. Um and no that's that, that's it really um there hasn't really been any any big dogs as such um 
the year year before I signed, did Exeter actually played Liverpool in the FA Cup and, and Klopp was there, so I, I just missed out on that. So there hasn't really been um there hasn't really been any um any big dogs as such. Zach. Uh when we played Shine and Tool and they were managed by Gus Hiddick. Um, you know, like he's a he's a big manager, and to be managing like China twenty under twenty one, you wouldn't really expect that. Uh, so yeah, he's probably the, he's probably the only one that we could, we could think of. Okay, last in our quick fire round, lads. A one word answer or two word answer for their name. Best player you've played with? Oh, Jesus, yeah. hard one. And you can't and you can't pick each other, Pierce and Lenho. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pick a centre half as the best player. Uh, no. Um, that's a hard one. See, I, I, I like to if I'm gonna pick the best player I've played, but I want to do it as what, how good they were when I played, not what they've become. Do you know what I'm saying? Of course, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to Ian Hart. Um, I never actually played in, in a first team game. I played in like a preseason friendlies or a 21s game and he like people go on about his left foot his right foot was unbelievable the way like he he was size i think he was like size seven and he, he wore like five and a half boots and like his both feet were unbelievable um ethan ampadu young lad who he was one for chelsea he's yeah. he, he, he played for us when he was 15 he's he was unbelievable when he was 15 um and Leno will know all about Ollie Watkins. He was unbelievable at Exeter. Unbelievable. Good, good player. Yeah. He'll, he'll go again. If Brentford don't get going, he'll go again, yeah. I think. He's, he's top. Leno, who's your teammate of choice? There's two people that come to mind. Okay, you can pick two. Uh, Bradley Dack. Okay. Like if you see, if you just watch, if, people, if there's videos of him out there, just, just to watch him, he's... Uh, He's so talented and he just works so hard uh, when he's playing. And then Seamus Coleman, uh, playing with the Irish team, is very good. That's and the career he's had. Pierce, Zach? Uh, the best, the most talented, I'd say, was uh, Stefan Sessignon. You'd want to see him in training and like, his feet were unbelievable. He just... I don't know if he had the, the attitude to, to go and be like one of the top players. Um, and then there was another fella, Kyle Edwards. He's yeah. he's broke he's broke through at he's broke through at West Brom. He's unbelievable. His feet are, like he breaks ankles in training. Just he was on loan at Exeter for a season, and he was he didn't play he didn't play an awful lot, but when he played, he turned fellas inside out, and he was unreal. Unbelievable, yeah, he's class, um, and now he's broke through at West Brom. Pierce, did you have one? Did you not hear me talk? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Ian Hart. Ollie Watkins. He said. Oh, he said, boys, I said Ian Hart. Ian Hart. Ethan Ampadu and Ollie Watkins. Oh, sorry, you did say that. I was reading. Uh, I was reading something else here about you actually on uh, Wikipedia <laughs> to, to, to line up my last question. So I do apologise. You've all given your answer about the players, yes? Jamie, you're meant to be professional here, mate. Come on. I am. Yeah, come Thanks on. Very much. Yeah. Trying to handle you as a the most. Uh, like, this is the most unstructured interview I've ever done because of you, <laughs> jump, jumping from this to that to the other. But it's good. I'm enjoying yeah. it. Um, lads, I want to finish on Ireland. And, Pierce, let's start with you. Um, tell me about playing for Ireland underage. Did you play in the 19s Euros? Or did you play in, you played in some big 19s games? I think you won cap for the 21s. And you was captain, weren't you? Yeah. Um, because, sorry, we have to say, Pierce and Dara are the same age. So they would have played for the same Ireland teams. <laughs> but Pierce wasn't capped till 17s. And, Dara, were you... 16th or 17th I was as well. Capped. How many games I played? I think I might have played. I got injured in the. I got my first back injury in one of the Ireland games. I mean, could be the second time I got injured in one of the Ireland okay. games. And I missed and 18th and 19th. Yeah. And Zach has played 15, 16, 17, 19, 21, so that's really good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, lads, let's have a chat about Ireland. Um, Leno, you've played for the senior team. Zach, you've been involved in Stephen Kenny's under 21s in the last while. Pierce, your international career would be a little bit further back than that in 2013, 2014, your last caps. So tell me about being young boys in green. Um, mine's, mine's been a little bit different. Um, of, of like We played for Belvedere, who was probably us and Cherry Orchard were the two top teams in the country, probably. And 
I was playing in every game for Belvedere and I, I wasn't being picked for Ireland. So um, from 15, 16s, I was, I was picked for 17s a couple of times, but there was always a couple of a couple of lads ahead of me. Um, then broke through at 19s under Paul Dool and then, and um, the captain at the time, Tommy Hobe, and he got he he got a nasty injury, and and fortunately enough, Paul Paul asked me to be the captain of the team, so I captained the team in the, in the elite phase in Serbia, and that was that was it's it's hard to explain. Like even though it was only under nine days, when you're lining up and 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 you're you're singing the national anthem, if you don't have goosebumps, then then there's something seriously wrong with you. But um. Yeah, I captained the 19s at, at underage level, and and um, I I've only I only played 45 minutes uh, for the 21s in a friendly, and even though I was picked about four or five times, but um, yeah, we we won't go into the 21s. Um, I haven't got great memories of that. So um, me um me me international career has been okay. Um, I've played under 19s against some decent players. So um, yeah, it's. It's it's decent enough, and and I won an award and stuff, so it's it's been okay. Zach, let's say on the twenty ones, and you're one of those players who, from the age of fourteen, you were in almost every Ireland squad right up to nineteens mm-hmm. and twenty ones. And Stephen Kenny has now moved to be the senior manager. How did you enjoy playing under him? And I suppose as well the style of football that the twenty ones. I'm sure the lads have been watching and, and the performances and the style they both come through the twenty ones at different times when the style was very different under different managers. But certainly you guys seem to love playing under Stephen. Yeah, he's, you know, I've said it in other interviews. He's just unbelievable. The confidence that he that he instills in his players. Like when you when you're going out to play, you feel like you can be anyone. Um, and then he said as well because his work ethic is is unbelievable. I don't think he ever switches off from football. And when you're on the training pitch, you can see that. Like he just he just loves the game. I think he just eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Um, and yeah, we've 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 had a good we had a good year and. I think we played some some exciting football that that's been different to what other Ireland teams have played. So hopefully you can you can bring that into the senior team. And I was talking to Jamie Lennon recently enough, who plays for St Pat's, and he's he turned 22 yesterday, and he's mm. worried that he might not be able to finish the campaign with the 21s because everything is off and the Euros has moved and stuff. Like the group is doing so well, I know a lot of the players, the likes of your Troy Parrott and all, have a, a few years. Adam Ead, Aaron Connolly are all yeah. quite young, Leo Connor and stuff. But like for you, are you are you still hopeful to be able to to play a part in that campaign if you wait for allow players who started the campaign to finish it? Yeah, obviously I, I don't see what it wouldn't um what it wouldn't let people finish it, but obviously that's it that's out of my control and I'd love to, I'd love to finish the campaign with the team. Um you know, we have we have a great group and I think you can see when we're on the pitch and when we're around each other we all get on really well and, and we are we've all bonded really well. Um so yeah, I'd love I'd love to finish it but Obviously, that's that's out of my control at the moment. Um, just have to wait and see what happens. Obviously, it's just uncertain times, isn't it? And in terms of, of the style of play, Zach, and again, it's something that the 21s teams haven't done much before. Now, the lads might tell me I'm wrong in that, but like yeah. for you being an attacking player mm. and having Stephen Kenny as the manager mm. and the impact that he made on, on the actual style and what we hope he'll make to the style of the senior team, which hopefully you guys might be involved in moving forward, like... Was he just walking out after his team talk going, just go and play? I know he was putting structure on it, but yeah. giving you a license to go and try things. Uh, yeah, obviously we had we had the the structure and the shape, but in in that structure we had the freedom to try things as attacking players, um, because we knew that we we had we had that shape if we did lose the ball to win it back and that. Um, but yeah, he, the first thing he said when he came in was that he he loves he loves wingers and he loves people trying trying different stuff um obviously you can't you can't be trying stupid stuff like but he gives you that freedom to run at people to try different passes and that so it's good and you can see like i think in the, in the sweden game there was there was lots of different clips of people trying different things and, and then we ended up winning 4-1 so it's just it's just that that confidence and that belief that he has in, in the whole team leno as someone who was Ireland under 21 captain and played i think 15 or 16 times have you enjoyed watching them over the last little while? Now that you're a senior international and you've outgrown the twenty ones. Yeah, they've like what Zach said, the style of play and stuff. It's it's probably different to what myself and Pierce um was used to playing under, and it's something for the country to look forward to. Like uh, Stephen Kenny by 
by the looks of his teams are like expansive, kind of want to kind of keep the ball um, type of team. So it's something that like most of the lads who are involved in the senior setup now will look forward to um, and hopefully enjoy. Um, like the previous managers have their own kind of style of playing, but he's I think he's a different type of style of playing. Um, but yeah, I look back on my kind of international career, like fond memories, especially like younger age, captain the under 21s, obviously a proud moment, and then going on to make my debut, which is uh, probably the proudest moment in my career. Uh, like that debut and, and playing at the Aviva in Dublin in front of your family and stuff, being involved in the goal, even though not scoring it, which we spoke about earlier on, and that. And uh, that was under Martin O'Neill, yeah? Martin O'Neill, yeah, yeah. I gave you. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure you loved working with Roy Keane for that little time, given your you were you know he would have would have been your one of your boyhood heroes with United growing up and stuff. Yeah, like he was growing up supporting United. Obviously, Roy Keane was the main man at United, and he was a person who I always looked up to. So it was a uh, it was a bit surreal, like you kind of say, a bit kind of starstruck. He was probably a bit like one of them um, to see Roy Keane in person. Like it's that was probably a big moment for me. Um, but no, it was, it was a fantastic moment. I didn't realise, I didn't expect to come on as early as I did. I came on after like, the, I don't know the exact minute, like 25, 30 minutes. In the first For John O'Shea, time. wasn't it? John yeah. John O'Shea in his uh, last game. So um, ah, it was a brilliant moment. And like I said, I had my family there, which is which is even better. And I'm sure at 26 and at the top end of the championship, you feel you've got unfinished business with Ireland if the path takes you there? Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, like, oh, I keep saying to like, I need to kind of, Blackburn's number one at the moment. Like your form for Blackburn will get you into the international setup. So I just have to kind of do my best when when all this kind of is lifted and uh, fingers crossed you can kind of push yourselves into the playoffs and get a little run going for us. I suppose you're competing with the likes of Shane Duffy and others, John Egan in that position. So there's there's other good centre backs who who are who are also, you know, in the squad and, and trying to get picked. Yeah, very good. It's a it's a very hard position to get into um in terms of player most of the play, the players who I'm kind of coming up against are all playing Premier League, which is uh, that's obviously an ambition of mine to get into the Premier League. Um, and I think if you'll have a better chance to get into the Irish squad if you are playing Premier League. But for the time being, I'll, I'll focus on Blackburn and do my best for them. Lads, very last thing, you've been great with your time. What does life look like after football? 36, 37, 38, you've retired. What does it look like? Uh, and Pierce, you can you can thank you, you can thank your mate Paul Curry for that question. He wants me to throw in a curveball, so there it is. <laughs> well, nice. I definitely won't be a pundit. Oh, well, if I was being a pundit, I'd definitely be a better pundit than Paul Curry. Anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> You're too ugly to be a pundit. <laughs> <laughs> you could be a, you could be a great pundit because you've been so straight talking during this. Yeah, I'm like Jamie. I have a face for the radio. <laughs> thanks very much. <laughs> um, answer your question, Jamie. Um. Life after football. Um, well, I'd like to say that um, I'd have a, I'd, I'd either be a, a coach a, a, of some sort or I'd have a, a decent job after getting my education sorted out um, with a couple of kids, um, married and hopefully living in, in back in Ireland. Lovely. Zach, Dara? Um, I'm <laughs> I'd be similar to Pierce in terms of obviously like having a family, living back home, preferably. Um, I'd like to like I'd like to stay involved in football in some some way, whether it's coaching or physio, sports science, whatever it is. Um, I think that's what I'm kind of I'm made for, and I, I totally enjoy it. Great, and Zach, you're not sure. I don't have a clue. You're definitely. 22, so in fairness, yeah, yeah. At, at the moment, I know that I, I definitely don't want to be a coach. It's not it's not something that interests me. Um, Maybe maybe something in, in business or, or like sports science or something like that. But yeah, I'm not really I'm not thinking about it too much at the moment. Great stuff, lads. I've loved chatting to you for the last hour and twenty minutes. Is there anything else I need to ask of, of interest, or have we covered it all? Covered it all, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I thought Pierce was going to throw another. No, I was, gonna, I was going to hammer Leno, but I won't. <laughs> No, still don't. Still We're still recording. I, I'm going to stop recording now and then he can hammer him all he wants. So, uh, listen, right. Sweeney, Zach Abzetti and Daryl Lennon, thanks so much for coming on to Ireland Away From Home. I've loved chatting to you and best of luck whenever football returns and we'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Cheers. Thank, Thank you. Jeremy. Cheers, Jeremy. Yeah.